I remember every bit of that day like it was yesterday. I came home from school and my, my sister wasn't there on a typical day. She would get home before me, watch over me, and she'd help me with my homework. Another hour passed by and she still hadn't come home. I remember riding my bike out in the court. I remember an undercover police car that came down the street. Right away I knew something was up. I just felt like it was gonna stop at our house. And it was the next day that I found out from my parents when it happened, that my sister was killed. A truck driver's driving through Pleasanton on the freeway, looked over to his right, and saw what he felt was a person in distress or possibly harmed. He starts walking down the drainage culvert. He sees blood and realizes there's a dead body down in the creek. I always dreaded getting a notification call like that. Somebody killed a little girl. It was a very cold crime scene. There's no weapon. There's no fingerprints. There's no footprints. Officers noticed a purse suspended in a tree above the body. They found a report card that had the name Tina Fails on it. Freshman at Foothill High School. She was stabbed 44 times. Another thing that was noted by the coroner was that there was probably no hilt or guard on the knife because there was no marks or indentations on the body. At some point, we felt that in the course of stabbing Tina, the suspect's hand would slide off of the handle because there's no protective guard onto the blade and actually cut themselves. There was very little to go on, so we had to rely on talking to people. Detectives go up to Foothill High School and they start interviewing students looking for leads to follow up on. They find out that Tina was being bullied at school. She used to ride the bus home, but several girls on the bus were picking on her. They were threatening to beat her up. Tina could no longer ride the bus. She had to go through the culvert. It was like a swamp. It felt spooky. The tunnel itself seemed like crossing into another dimension. Once you got halfway, you couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. The day Tina was murdered, the girls that taunted Tina had thrown rocks at her. I think that day, one of them had said, hey, let's tie Tina to a tree and stab her. These girls were questioned. They did share that they didn't like her for whatever reason. But that particular day, the girls were actually in detention so it wasn't possible for them to have been involved in killing Tina. Shortly before 3 p.m., two students were riding in a car, Steve Carlson and Todd Smith. Carlson remarked, look, there's Tina Fails, as she was headed toward the culvert. Steve sees a male student named Jeff Michelson running through the drainage culvert that goes under I-680 right around 3 o'clock or 3.05 at the time of the murder. Jeff Michelson becomes one of the first big suspects in the case. Investigators find out that Tina's mom, Shirley, has a boyfriend who has recently moved out. His name is Keith Fitzwater. Keith moved out of the Fales residence because he was creating some family tension in the house. I didn't care for Keith much at all. He was 15 years younger than my mom. He was in his early 20s at the time. He had a pretty bad temper. He started drinking heavily. He had been violent towards Shirley. A few days prior to my sister being murdered, my sister started yelling at him to leave my mom alone. It made me feel like it could be Keith. When detectives look into Jeff Michelson, they find out that he was known as the bully that picked on other smaller kids. According to eyewitnesses, on the day of Tina's murder, a kid named Steve Carlson was taken by Jeff and thrown into a dumpster. 
and they locked him in there for about 10 minutes before a teacher came and let him out. And then later, Steve Carlson sees Jeff in the general vicinity of the crime scene at the time of Tina's murder. Jeff carried a hunting style knife in a sheath that he wore sometimes on his belt. Investigators went to interview him and they noticed that he had a cut on his index finger. Officers got a search warrant and went to his house. They found two hunting knives. The hunting knives were sent to the crime lab. They were examined for traces of blood, and they were found to be clean. Investigators continue to look at Keith Fitzwater. He was physically, verbally abusive. The only time he was ever nice was the night when Tina died. You know, it was unbelievably nice. It almost seemed suspicious. Keith asked his boss if he could get a ride from him to Shirley's house because Tina had been stabbed to death. Detectives spoke with his boss. The one thing that they find out is that Keith had a knife on his belt at the time, which he removed and asked his boss to hold on to it. He says, why do you want me to keep it? And Keith said, I don't want to go in the house with a knife. This certainly was suspicious behavior. You had to think something was going on. We retrieved the knife and sent it for analysis. It came back with no trace of blood. I didn't really have anyone to fill the void after my sister passed. My mom did what she could, but she started breaking down mentally. She was in constant dismay, just wanting to know what happened. As the case gets older and older, she slowly started deteriorating just mentally. She would always have her house spotless. And whenever she'd have these breakdowns, she wouldn't clean the dishes for months. I'm seeing her deteriorate, just go crazy right in front of me. In the 80s, there were three serial killers identified as murdering young girls in the Pleasanton area. One of them has to be the person responsible for Tina's death. Where do we have the best chance of finding something that maybe was overlooked before? When I'm looking at the evidence photos, there is a purse hanging from the branches of a tree. Seeing the purse up in the tree just didn't make sense to me at all. I think Tina would try and hold on to her purse and, and possibly try and fight back with it using it as a weapon. It just really clicked that Probably the last person to touch this purse uh, was the suspect. I handed it over through the chain of evidence to the FBI in Quantico, Virginia. One day I get a work call and it's the FBI. The FBI agent says to me, do you want to know who killed Tina Fales? The FBI found four drops of the suspect's blood on the purse. This solidified the theory that had gone back for decades that the murderer's hand had slid down on the knife, possibly cutting himself. I wasn't ready for what I discovered. The FBI agent says, it's Steve Carlson, the student who was locked in the dumpster. Later, after Tina's body was found, Steve was the first witness officers spoke with. He told them that he saw a male student named Jeff Michelson in the general vicinity of the crime scene on that particular day. He was trying to push investigators toward another suspect. Steve was 16, Tina was 14. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that a kid could kill a kid. It's just so heinous. It's, you don't want to believe it. Steve's parents left him alone in the house. Steve went to the school and invited other students to come over to his house and drink and use drugs. Nobody wanted to go. And then later, some kids lock him in the dumpster. And when Steve gets out, he is covered in garbage and food, and he is pissed off. 
So at that point, Steve returned home to his house and got into his mom's car and started driving around the neighborhood. Steve tells them that Tina gives him a dirty look, like, why are you speeding through the neighborhood? We believe that Steve got upset and at that point decided to follow Tina down into that creek. Steve's residence had a clear view of the culvert where Tina was killed. According to eyewitnesses, after the body is discovered, Steve Carlson is seen on the roof of his home watching as police begin their investigation. We're looking into a homicide that occurred in Pleasanton in 1984 in high school. Do you remember that? You were in high school. Tina Fales got killed. Do you remember that? Yeah. We're recontacting old cases <coughs> from that case, and we. Oh, yeah. oh, here you go. Steve became violently ill. You're under arrest for the murder of Steve Fail. But for Tina's mom, justice didn't come soon enough. On the day prior to the trial, my mom had a massive heart attack. I think she just couldn't go through the trial and died of a broken heart. 